Welcome back to the Skunk Works. Now I've been going through the file and I've noticed there's some scope for some efficiency improvements. Now, what do I mean? Well, we've got to this situation where we can just click on these pieces. We can see possible moves. So I'm going to click on the bishop now, see the possible moves, click on the piece again and the possible moves disappear. Now, that's great. That's what we did in the last video. But what's been bothering me is that this takes a while. So I'm going to click on the bishop now. We've got a little pause there. Click on the bishop again and we've got quite a long pause there. So that for me is not quite good enough. We need to be able to do this faster. As a developer, after a while, that's going to bother me. But more importantly, it might bother our end customer. So how can we improve the efficiency and get it, get it running a bit better? I'm going to get into the uh, Visual Basic Editor now. I'm in the B Moves. What's it called, this module? It's called B Moves Process, B Move Process Module. And this is the code that's running when we click on the pieces. And what specifically is problematic here? Well, you remember from the last video, we had some code, which is just here. We had some code to change the format of the squares if that square is a possible move. And at the moment, we're actually going to the engine sheet. Just switch over to the engine sheet quickly. We're going to the engine sheet and we're copy pasting these formats. Now, in Excel, there's always multiple possible approaches and different approaches work in different situations. The benefit of the of this present approach, this current approach, is that we could change the format in this cell that would be immediate, immediately reflected. The drawback is that it's not very efficient. It takes a long time for that routine to run. I want something simpler and more efficient. So I'm going to sacrifice that functionality, the ability to be able to change the formats. I'm going to sacrifice that and make a trade off for something more efficient. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to get rid of this copy paste code and going to substitute in uh, some VBA, which is just going to change the border of the cell. Now, I did do a little bit of preparation for this video, not in the spirit of the series, you might say. And to some extent, I would agree. But this um, formatting code always seems to be complicated, particularly when you're working with borders. So I did do a little bit of testing beforehand and I found what worked. I also had a helpful user comment from, I think it was Peter. Do I do apologize if I got your name wrong. Thank you for the comment on the previous video. And I'm integrating uh, some of uh, the ideas that you put in your comment there. So this line of code here um, is what I'm talking about. And I've just yeah, substituted that line of code for the previous copy paste line of code that we've identified as inefficient. So what is this code going to do? Well, it's going to change the thickness uh, of the borders it's just outside of your screenshot. That's going to bring it into the screenshot. Now it's going to change the thickness uh, of the borders. And let's just yeah, let's just see what happens. Control S, save the file. So now if I hit this pawn here, we can see we've just got some thick borders there. OK. That's a good start, but we don't just want the thick borders. We also, we want something more distinctive than that. We'd like some red as well. We'd like some red border color. So to do that, well, first we're going to do it inefficiently and then more efficiently in, in a second. I'm going to change uh, borders, dot borders, dot color index. So always difficult for a British person to write the word color uh, omitting the the U that should right rightfully be there. I'm only joking, my American friends. Color index equals, and I know uh, if we put a three here, we're going to get red. Now, if you Google Excel color index, something like that, you'll be able to see the 64 color index colors. But this this is a simple and effective way of defining color uh, in Excel. So we're expecting to get this thick border now, and we're expecting it to be red. So back to the board. First, we've gone back to the normal board, moved out of possible moves mode, moving into possible moves mode. And you can see that we've got the red squares there. That's great. We can also see that, that it's faster, that it's more efficient, although that didn't come across too well in the screenshot there. But it does appear to be uh, more efficient. Sometimes, yeah, because I'm doing a screen recording, uh, it doesn't come across as efficiently as it should. But you can try this yourself uh, at home. And that seems to be working uh, pretty well there. Okay, so back to the VBA editor. 
uh, what else can we do here? Uh, well, let's improve the efficiency of this line of code. So something I'm trying to do in my practice is use repeat code less. So much I'm looking up at this chunk of code at the top. Maybe we'll come to that towards the end. Is there an opportunity for making that more efficient? Uh, I'm looking to use with and end with to report to avoid rather repeated code. So this chunk of code that is repeated, uh, we can take that and join it up with with at the top. And then we don't need a dot at the end there. And then we can reduce this, this code here to just dot weight and then do the same thing, a similar thing with the second line of code. So we've got dot color index and then end with. And this too should improve uh, the efficiency. Control S, save the file, uh, hit the piece there and then hit the piece again. Seems to be working okay. And then hit the piece one more time and seems to be working okay. So what we're dealing with here is what I'm calling efficiency efficiency improvements. And uh, we just had another video on the channel uh, just on uh, just this week as well, which is to do with testing and also to do with efficiency improvement. So it's one of those things you've got to be doing as you're putting the code in. You know, it's very easy to get excited and just be thinking, oh, we should be doing loops and conditional statements, all of the cool stuff. You know I love all of that stuff. But in the long run, regular testing, regular efficiency improvements, it's going to help your sanity. When you're having a coding session, the way I approach coding these days is just, can I keep my stress below a critical level if I hit that critical level, I'm going to want to give up. I'm going to want to throw the computer, the microphone out of the window. The only goal of any coding session I do this days, these days, I was doing one this morning on a very uh, complex uh, piece I'm doing at the moment, is just to keep the stress below that critical level. How do you do that? Do that with frequent testing, frequent efficiency improvements, and don't save all the testing for the end. Then it's going to be very stressful and don't miss an opportunity to improve efficiency. If you don't continually improve the, the efficiency, things are gonna gradually slow down and get more stressful. So with that said, what other uh, efficiency improvement opportunities are there? Well, we've got these, these red squares flashing up. That seems to be working a bit better, but this second half of the code, I'm just gonna trigger it now. This is taking a while. Now I do have a screen recording going, but that took a couple of seconds for me and you'll be able to see how long it takes on your system. So what exactly are we doing there? And can we improve it? Well, we can see at the top of this routine, uh, it's sending, we've got a conditional statement here, and it's sending the routine to this color board remote routine, which is in the first module, I assume. Let's have a look down the module. Yeah, color board remote. So Excel is running all of this code. It's running, Excel is running all of this code. Uh, and do we need Excel to do that? No, we don't. We just actually need Excel to change the borders. Yeah. Now we've changed the borders to thick and to red. So we just need a routine to change all of the borders back to thin and to black. That's going to be much more efficient than doing the whole board format routine, which we just saw there. That's taken a couple of seconds. How are we going to do that? Well, let's have a new routine to do this. Go into the uh, bottom of the VBA editor here. I'll just flip over to the other side of the screen. And uh, what should we call it? Well, a meaningful name uh, is important. So let's call it sub change borders. Say change board borders and more accurate than change would be restore because we're restoring it to what it was originally. So again, this may seem very pedantic, but this saves you time and stress in the long run. Being able to uh, look at a routine and know from the name of the routine what the routine does, that's going to save us uh, time and stress, keep, keep that stress below that critical level. And what do we want? Well, we've got some code that we know works, uh, which we're putting up here. So let's just take this code and let's adapt it for our new purpose down here. Okay. So what's the range that we're working with here? I'm just going to make sure the indent, uh, just make sure the indentation is reasonable. A little bit of precise work there. So I'm going to hit shift and tab now, shift and tab, 
that returns the indentation to nothing and then just tab it out and that means we've got the nice uh, kind of consistent indentation there. Uh, so which range are we working with? Well, we know we've got a named range at the top here. I'm not sure why the, this box has come all the way across, but we can quickly move it back across that. We have a named range here, which is, again, uh, an informative name for the named range, board area. So can we adapt this code and just say with, and this is the board sheet, so with sheets, board, dot range, I think, it, yeah, I can see in the top left corner of the screen there, board underscore area uh, dot borders, I think we need as well. Dot weight, so we want to return the weight to thin, and then we want to return the color, the color of the borders to black, which I believe is one, and we'll soon find out uh, if it's not. Control S, save the file, so I'm just going to uh, play just this routine here. So I've put some new code in. We're going to test it. Uh, hit the F5 key on the Windows PC. And I can see, yep, all the borders seem to have changed. But I think previously uh, we didn't have any thick red borders in there. So let's put some thick red borders in. Then go back to what we just created in the VBA editor. Uh, hit the F5 key. And we can see, yep, the borders seem to be returning to normal. So I'm happy with that. So now we need to integrate this code because this routine is just sitting on its own at the end of the module. We need to integrate it into the existing operation. How do we do that? Well, we're going to call the routine. Control C here. So I've copied the routine name. Call the routine here. Remember, this routine is the routine that colors the whole board in the kind of detailed and manual way that's not particularly efficient. So let's drop the new routine in there, and then we should be good to go. Just having a quick sense check, looking through the code, save the file, and then I'm going to go back over to the other side, save the file, and then I'm going to hit uh, one of the pieces. Uh, what's happening? Okay, hit the piece again, and we can see how much more efficient that looks. I hope that's coming through on your screen recording, but we've saved couple of seconds there uh, at least and this seems to be working well okay so what else have we got in this routine uh, I'm just doing I'm moving from specifically efficiency efficiency improvements kind of general maintenance uh, so we're talking about keeping that stress below the critical level so I've got a li little bit of time now five or ten minutes and what else could we possibly improve about this code and I mentioned this big chunk of kind of text here and is there a way for us to make this more efficient and can we test it to see if after making it more efficient it still works because it still has to have the same uh, efficacy the same functionality uh, after we've changed it a bit so I'm thinking could we use with and end with to make this more efficient control s save the file and then i'm going to put with in here now i'm looking at the code and thinking what are the repeated uh, structures here well there's clearly a repeated structure this range uh, current square now could we take this out could we take this out combine it with with combine it with with <laughs> put it at the top there and then eliminate it from the routine. Now, in the spirit of this series, as you can probably feel, I'm kind of thinking through this um, as I'm doing it. And then what if we just delete this? What's what's the VBA editor going to say? OK, it doesn't appear to have created an error. Going to delete this again. Then dot column. Now, I'm being very careful with the deletion here, making sure I'm only deleting what I've already inputted at the top of the with end with statement. So you need a little bit of, you know, precise work there. Make sure you're paying attention. And then, OK, so we're expecting the same thing to happen. Control S, save the file. OK, back to the board. Seems to be working fine. OK, that's feeling a lot more efficient. I hope that's coming through on your screenshot. Hopefully you've felt that efficiency improvement at home. To me, that's 100% better. Uh, it seems to be 
three or four times as fast, much smoother, better for the programmer, better for your user as well. If the, if you have smooth operation, and uh, my first uh, spreadsheet lecturer, the guy who taught me, used to say slickness is what we want to aim for right at the top level. Does it feel slick? Does it feel super smooth, easy to work with? You know, like using an, an Apple product, you'd say is a very slick experience. You know, everything's just lined up nicely, works really well. Uh, so that's what we're looking for with our spreadsheets. I would say this is feeling slick, so nice and smooth. And I'm thinking, I'm looking forward to coming back to this file and working with it. So I'm still seeing a lot of repeated uh, syntax here. So I'm wondering if we can improve this still further. Well, all we're doing here is, yeah, we've got this exclude cell uh, variable. It's repeated four times. So could we rewrite this using or, using or to combine, we've effectively got four separate instructions here, four separate simple conditional statements. Could we combine them into a single conditional statement and therefore make things, hopefully make things more efficient? Okay, let's try this. So I'm going to put or here, or underscore. Now I think we need to get rid, I think we need to get rid of the if here. Just looking at the syntax closely. Okay. Okay. So we definitely don't need this, this then. Okay, how's that? Okay, the VVA editor seems to be okay with that. So this is essentially the same thing. So say taken those two single conditional statements, combine them into one conditional statement using this little or, and hopefully this is giving us the same thing. How can we test this? Control S, save the file. And we do seem to have the same result here. So I'm looking out for any colored squares outside of the board, remember, this is what we did in the previous video, tried to make sure Excel was only looking into the board and not outside of it, seems to be accurate. So can I repeat this? I'm gonna get rid of this exclude, exclude cell and get rid of this then. Fully expect the VBA editor to moan at me <laughs> while I'm trying to put this together. We only need one then. So here I'm, all, I'm almost looking at the shape of the code. I'm looking to you know, they say when you when you read, well, I've heard this bit of kind of pseudo psychology probably, but you're not processing uh, the individual letters as such, you're processing shapes. And I'm looking at, 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 at the shape here and just want to put this or at the end of each line. And does it look reasonable? I don't need this if either. Okay, there we go. So yeah, talking about shape, you can see we've got, you know, even if you couldn't speak English, you might be able to replicate uh, this shape. It may sound like a kind of weird idea, but um, hopefully it's, uh, it's helpful to somebody out there. Okay, so what's happened here? Dot com or, okay, it's more than then. Okay, so we've got all our ors in there or dot column. Ah, I think we need a plus in that. I think at some point I've lost a plus when I was talking about the shape of language, probably. I'm just going to hit the uh, undo key, control Z, and see if at some point I lost a plus. Yep, I did manage to lose a plus at some point. The plus is there. Okay, so dot column, and then dot column again, and then we need Yep, expecting uh, the VBA editor to complain there. Then we need or underscore. Okay, expecting the VBA editor to complain there. Now it should be a single statement. Again, we've lost that little plus there. Gonna put the plus in. Okay, and the VBA editor seems to be happy with that. So I was having a bit of interaction with the VBA editor there, but easy to get stressful about that. I think early in my coding career, I would have got stressed about that. Oh, it's telling me I've got it wrong. I've got it wrong again. Shut up. 
Um, I'm sure you felt that. I felt that so many times, but through my career, I've learned to value those error messages because they actually tell us when something's wrong. And if you can stay calm, keep that stress level below the critical level, you can receive that feedback as a positive thing and then make the fixes and hopefully get it to a point where you're not getting, getting those error messages uh, anymore. So you, you can actually try, try to value those error messages because they're giving you essential information. Um, let's have an indentation here. So we've got our with, end with, and then this is all a single uh, conditional statement. Now, control S, save the file. Okay, I'm just clicking on the pieces again. Now this feels much faster. And I'd say this is feeling like, you know, a slick routine now. Okay, what else have we got here? Just having a quick look through any other opportunities or can I tidy up some code now because it's fresh in my mind uh, what we've done. So why don't I tidy up some code? Uh, for example, I think uh, we could optimize the arrangement of the annotation here. There we go. Let's put this in here. And then I'm going to say begin here and then kind of close the annotation, just like you open and close a loop, or in this case, a with end with statement, and then say end, end at the bottom here. I think I can live without these spaces. There's always a trade-off. You know, it's good to have some spaces between the code, but if you have too many spaces, then your code's going to be really, really long. So it's a trade-off that. Okay, I'm looking through it like, have I got meaningful annotations? Now it's fresh in my head. When I come back to this, it might be in two weeks, two months time, it won't be fresh in my head. So can I make some kind of quick wins now? Put some annotations in that will help retain my sanity when I come back to it in the future. Okay, so this is change formats for possible square, uh, for possible move square. Okay, there we go. So every line of code that's not, every line of code that's not trivial, and an example of a trivial line of code would be here because it's completely obvious what the line of code's doing. Every non-trivial line of code has a, has an annotation. That's going to help me understand this in the future. Okay, so that's the end of our efficiency improve, improvements video. As I said, I came to this uh, thinking, right, I'm going to get into this move stuff. We've got the diagonal moves. Now we've got to think about vertical, horizontal lines. Came into it thinking I would do that, but then I just started playing with it and it just wasn't efficient. And if it's not efficient, then that is going to play on your mind. It's going to increase your stress level. As soon as your stress level gets to that critical level, you know, your programming session is over. You're not going to be thinking straight. So you've got to be constantly working on those efficiency improvements, constantly testing, improving efficiency. That's the way to keep our programming project on track. I'll see you in the next video.